Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Schultz. Today we're rejoining the story of Beauty and the Beast, and, well, Beauty has met Beast, and the last we've left them, it's the night before the merchant is set to leave the castle, and the Beast has instructed Beauty and he to take two traveling trunks and load them with precious goods for the brothers and sisters of Beauty. And now, this is Beauty and the Beast, Part 5. Then he went away after saying, Goodbye, Beauty. Goodbye, old man. And though Beauty was beginning to think with great dismay of her father's departure, she was afraid to disobey the Beast's orders, and they went into the next room, which had shelves and cupboards all around it. They were greatly surprised at the riches it contained. There were splendid dresses fit for a queen with all the ornaments that were to be worn with them, and when Beauty opened the cupboards, she was quite dazzled by the gorgeous jewels that lay in heaps upon every shelf. After choosing a vast quantity, which she divided between her sisters, she had made a heap of the wonderful dresses for each of them. She opened the last chest, which was full of gold. I think, father, she said, that as the gold will be more useful to you, we had better take out the other things again and fill the trunks with it. So they did this, but the more they put in, the more room there seemed to be, and at last they put back all the jewels and dresses they had taken out. And Beauty added even more, as many more of the jewels as she could carry at once, and then the trunks were not too full, but they were so heavy that an elephant could not have carried them. The beast was mocking us, cried the merchant. He must have pretended to give us all these things, knowing that I could not carry them away. Let us wait and see, answered Beauty. I cannot believe that he meant to deceive us. All we can do is to fasten them up and leave them ready. So they did this and returned to the little room, where to their astonishment they found a breakfast ready. The merchant ate with a good appetite, as the beast's generosity made him believe that he might perhaps venture to come back soon and see Beauty. But she felt sure that her father was leaving her forever, so she was very sad when the bell rang sharply for the second time and warned them that the time was come for them to part. They went down into the courtyard, where two horses were waiting, one loaded with the two trunks, the other for him to ride. They were pawing the ground in their impatience to start, and the merchant was forced to bid Beauty a hasty farewell and as soon as he was mounted he went off at such a pace that she lost sight of him in an instant. Then Beauty began to cry, and wandered sadly back to her own room. But she soon found that she was very sleepy, and as she had nothing better to do, she lay down and instantly fell asleep. And then she dreamed that she was walking by a brook, bordered with trees, and lamenting her sad fate when a young prince, Handsomer than anyone she had ever seen, and with a voice that went straight to her heart, came to her and said, Ah, beauty, you are not so unfortunate as you suppose. Here you will be rewarded for all you have suffered elsewhere. Your every wish shall be gratified. Only try to find me out, no matter how I may be disguised, as I love you dearly, and in making me happy, you will find your own happiness. Be as true-hearted as you are beautiful, and we shall have nothing left to wish for. What can I do, Prince, to make you happy? said Beauty. Only be grateful, he answered, and do not trust too much to your eyes, and above all, do not desert me until you have saved me from my cruel misery. After this, she thought she found herself in a room with a stately and beautiful lady, who said to her, Dear Beauty, Try not to regret all you have left behind you, for you are destined to a better fate. Only do not let yourself be deceived by appearances. Beauty found her dreams so interesting that she was in no hurry to awake, but presently the clock roused her by calling her name softly twelve times, and then, when she got up and found her dressing table set out with everything she could possibly want, and when her toilet was finished, she found dinner was waiting in the room next to hers. But dinner does not take very long when you are all by yourself, and very soon she sat down cosily in a corner of a sofa and began to think about the charming prince she had seen in her dream. And 
That is part five of Beauty and the Beast. And this is where the story really differs quite dramatically from the version of the tale that we get with Disney. And I like it. Although it does really seem like Beauty is being willfully obtuse right from these dreams. She should have figured it all out by now, but she won't. And that gives us more story to tell. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com. We'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.